Uh, let me close with a plea to teachers and administrators and school board members and parents and anyone else who's able to influence what goes on in K-12 and especially high school education. You are sending those of us who teach at the college level increasingly diverse students, and that's great. It's especially wonderful to see so many young men and women at places like Princeton, and lots of other places, who are of the first generation in their families to go to college. I, I'm that myself, and, and I really think it's wonderful to see it and see so much of it. It's also great to see so many children of immigrants in my classes, immigrants from nations spanning the entire globe. Bravo. That's what we want. But I'm also seeing something else. And it's not what we want or should want. Students who are diverse in myriad ways and yet alike in their viewpoints and perspectives and prejudices. Students who have absorbed what I sometimes call the New York Times view of the world. They think what, evidently, they think they are supposed to think. They seem to have absorbed uncritically progressive ideology and they embrace it zealously obediently and, alas, dogmatically as a faith, as a kind of religion. Challenging its presuppositions and tenets is regarded not merely as wrong or even heretical, but as in many quite, uh, case, and as in many cases, quite literally, unthinkable. I just can't, couldn't possibly conceivably think that. Challenging its presuppositions and tenets is regarded not merely as wrong or even heretical, but unthinkable, in other words, they come to us, these students, very diverse in so many ways, and yet already in groupthink. I suppose that makes the job of those left-wing professors who actually do want to indoctrinate their students easy. They come pre-indoctrinated. <laughs> now, this is bad. Sure, it makes it fun like, for people like me to shock and scandalize these kids to awaken them from their dogmatic slumbers in the way I suppose it was fun for secular liberal professors of an earlier era to shock and scandalize students from devout evangelical backgrounds by teaching Darwinian evolution or teaching them uh, the historical critical approach to understanding the Bible. These days I'm, I'm feeling a little kind of a kinship with those professors from the, from, from the 1950s because suddenly I'm occupying their role. I'm the, I'm the guy who is, uh, again, awakening, awakening them from their dogmatic slumbers. But that's scarcely comforting. The purpose of um, uh, higher education is not to enable me to entertain myself. If teachers or schools are doing the indoctrination, they really must stop. And even if they aren't, schools need to teach students to question dominant or prevailing opinions among their peers and in their communities and equip them with the tools of critical thinking and logical reasoning that will make such questioning intellectually fruitful for them. For starters, kids need to be taught that whatever they and their peers believe and take as what all right-thinking people believe is actually contested by fellow citizens of theirs who are no less reasonable people of goodwill than they themselves are. My experience with students in recent years tends to support the thesis that many are ignorant of this fact. I'm just inclined to think that if somebody doesn't go along with the New York Times editorial policy on this, that, or the other thing, they really are rubes or bigots or fools or the, the tools of nefarious capitalist interests or what have you. Sure, they know there are people who don't share the editorial board of the New York Times opinion or the opinion of people on the stage at the Academy Awards, you know, Katy Perry or Lady Gaga or whatever, but they really think those people are either bigots or ignoramuses. And by saying that students, as I said, need to be taught that there are reasonable people who don't share their outlook, I mean they need to be taught by example as well as by precept. Teachers in schools need to model the tolerance, open-mindedness, willingness to challenge and be challenged, and other values that we need to see more of in our students at all levels and in our citizens. Young men and women in, say, New York public or private schools or in San Francisco or Chicago should not have to wait for college to encounter libertarian or neoconservative or socially conservative arguments, authors, guest speakers, or for that matter, teachers. 
I have a sense that there are many schools in which conservative teachers are as rare, and if they exist at all, exotic, as they are in universities. Whatever the reason, or the, whatever accounts for this state of affairs, it is not good. A final word for schools and teachers. Especially in the domains of civic and moral education, students need to be equipped with a fund of basic knowledge, including notably knowledge of American and world history, and with the skills to think deeply and critically, and for themselves. Thinking for yourself should be a big, should be a, it should be like this. What is this thing you were talking about, Checker, ESL or whatever it is? That, what's the latest fad? Okay, I want a new fad. The new fad is independent thinking. The, the slogan is, think for yourself. It'll be a radical idea. Think for yourself. If schools are doing their jobs properly, they will be sending us at the universities students who can spot bias in any direction in, say, history textbooks, and even if the bias is in a direction they themselves favor. Our job then, at the university level, will be to help them deepen their knowledge and further refine their critical thinking skills. Kids will come to us from high school already on their way to being independent thinkers, lifelong learners, and their own best critics. This is when I know I've succeeded. Not, it's not just when they are learning, or even when they are, I can tell, going to be lifelong learners. We've now got them in the mode where they're going to be lifelong learners. I need one more thing to say bingo. And that is I see that they are now their own best critics. They don't have to wait for me to challenge them on even deeply held views that they have. If I say, Henry, you, uh, you believe in, uh, you believe in uh, that, that uh, climate change. Uh, you, you, you hold the standard progressive view on, on climate change. Um, why are there some people like Freeman Dyson and Will Happer and people like that who, who, who aren't buying it? What, you know, you, you, you are and you think they're wrong. Uh, if they were here, what would they say to you? And if they can tell me how they would criticize themselves, perhaps drawing on the resources of people like the ones I've, I've mentioned, then I know we're there. We've mission accomplished. We've made them their own best critics. And that means they will also be on their way, as Bill noted, to being responsible citizens, fit to enjoy, and equipped to play their role in sustaining and passing along to future generations the rich blessings of living in a democratic republic. Thank you.